Hey everybody, this is Precalculus, and this is a week 19 review. So we're just going to go over some stuff that you guys should already know. Um, one of the first things we'll go over here is going to be um, a review of linear equations. So linear equations are equations or functions in the form of y equals mx plus b. m is going to be our slope, and b is our y-intercept. Um, these questions are going to give you two points on a line and ask you to write the equation of the line. So um, it'll say, what is the equation of the line that passes through negative 3, negative 1, and negative 1, 3. All right, so to solve one like this, first we're going to figure out what our slope is. So our slope, our m value right there, is going to be our rise over run. And to find the rise, that's our up and down, that's going to be our y value, so the 1 and the 3. So if we went from negative 1 to 3, we would move 4 spaces up, right? And then our run is going to be our x value, which is negative 3 to negative 1. So if we started at negative 3 and we went to negative 1, we would have moved to the right, so in a positive direction, two spaces, so positive two. Um, and then we're going to reduce that fraction, so four divided by two equals two. So our slope equals two. Now all we have to do is plug that m value in to our equation along with the x and y from one of these. So if I said I'm going to use this one, and it doesn't matter which one you use, you could use either one. So here's my x and here's my y. So I'm going to rewrite my formula of y equals mx plus b. And my y is going to be negative 1, because of that right there, equals, our m is going to be 2, we already figured that out, times x, which is negative 3, plus b. So we're solving for b right now. So negative 1 equals 2 times 3 would be negative 6 plus b. Now we're going to move this 6, so plus 6. And we're going to get 6 minus 1 is 5. Okay, so now we know our m value and our b value, and we can write our equation, which would be y equals m, which is 2, x plus b, which is 5. And there's the answer. And you'll have to write it just like that on the quiz. You'll have to type it in. All right, let's do another one of those. And like I said, this is review, so you guys have done this before. All right, write an equation for the line that passes through points negative 8, 6, and 2, negative 9. So first we have to find our slope. And our slope is going to be our rise over run. Our rise is going to be our up and down value, so that's going to be our y. So if we went from 6 to negative 9, think about that as an up and down value, here's 0, and we started at 6, and we went down, so it's going to be negative, to negative 9, right? Here we move 6 spaces. Here we move 9 spaces. 9 and 6 is 15, so we went down 15 spaces. So the top is going to say negative 15. All right, now for our x value, that's going to be our back and forth, that's our run, and it's going to be negative 8 to 2. So here's our number line. If we started at negative 8, here's 0, and we went to 2, we went 8 spaces here, and then 2 more spaces there. 8 and 2 is 10, and that would be positive because we were moving from the right, from a negative to a positive value. So 15 over 10. And then we can reduce our fraction. Hello, eraser. There we go. Okay, so we can reduce our fraction. Divide in both of these by 5, and we would have 3 over, over 2. So our m value equals 3 over 2, and that is going to be negative because that negative on the 15 right there, so it's negative 3 over 2. Now all we have to do is plug in our x and y from one of these. So here's our x, here's our y. So we're going to say y, no, oops, I did that the wrong way around. 
here's our x and here's our y. Don't make that mistake. All right, y would be 6 equals m, which would be our slope, which is negative 3 over 2, times x, which is negative 8, plus b. Okay, so we need negative 3 over 2 times negative 8 over 1. These negatives are going to cancel each other. Negative times a negative equals a positive. These t 8 and 2 cancel. 3 times 4 is 12. So that would be positive 12. So 6 equals 12 plus b. So now we subtract our 12 and we get negative 6 equals b. All right, so now we can write our equation. It's going to be y equals m, which is negative 3 over 2, x plus b, which is negative 6. And we don't write plus negative 6. We would just write minus 6 because it means the same thing. All right, if you have to type in a fraction, you're just going to use that little um, backward slash key to type your fraction. And your plus and minus key should be up at the top of your keyboard. All right, next part is about some absolute value equations or absolute value functions. So um, remember when we do the absolute value, an absolute value equation or absolute value function and we evaluate that, we're going to have two answers. So absolute value, we're going to get two answers. And one is for if it was negative and the other one's for if it was positive. So for example, if we have the absolute value of negative 4 plus 5x equals 16. All right, so everything on this side of the equal side in that absolute value set, sign there. So I have to account for the negative and the positive values. So if I said negative 4 plus 5x equals 16, and then I'm going to account for the negative value. So negative 4 plus 5x equals negative 16. That allows me to get two answers there. So all I have to do is solve these. Pretty easy, basic stuff here. 5x equals 20, divide by 5, and I'm going to get x equals 4. Okay, so 4 is one of our values. And the other value would be minus 4. Oh, no, plus 4. Let's see. There we go. 5x equals negative 12. Divide by 5, x equals negative 12 over 5. So you'd write that as negative 12 over 5, and then there is your answer. Two answers there for each of those. So when you type those in, separate them by parentheses. Okay, uh, let's do another one of those. So we've got the absolute value of negative 2r minus 1 equals 11. So we're going to say negative 2r minus 1 equals 11, just the way it is. Then we're going to say negative 2r minus 1 equals negative 11. And then we just solve. So I would do plus 1. And I would get negative 2r equals 12 divided by negative 2. And I get r equals negative 6. That's one of our values. And then this one, I'm going to say minus 1, minus 1. Oh, plus 1. Yep, there we go. That just didn't seem right. All right, negative 2 e r equals negative 10 divided by negative 2. And we get r equals negatives cancel each other. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So our other value, so that would be negative 6, and this would be 5. And there's your answer to that one. All right, one more of these. Absolute value of v plus 8 minus 5 equals 2. Now, I cannot set this... Um, I can't find my negative and positive values. I can't set it equal to the negative value and the positive value until I have nothing but this absolute value sign on by itself on this side of the equal sign, right? I have to have that by itself. I cannot have that. Right? I have to get rid of that first. So to get rid of that, I'm just going to say plus 5 on both sides. Right? And now I have the absolute value of v plus 8 
equals 7. That's what I need to have. So then I can just do v plus 8 equals 7 and v plus 8 equals negative 7. You can only do that negative and positive right there if you have nothing but your absolute value part of your equation left on that side of equal sign. All right, so then I'll do minus 8, minus 8, 7 minus 8, negative 1, and then minus 8, minus 8, and that would be v equals negative 15. So it would be negative 1, negative 15 for that one. Whoops. All right, the next part is um, solving equations. So we got some complex equations. You guys have done this before. Um, something like negative 10 plus 3 times 8 plus 8n equals negative 6 times n minus 4. All right, you're going to have to have pencil and paper when you're doing this. Um, little quiz. All right, so we're going to do 3 times 8. You got a rainbow first is 24. Be careful for your negatives and your positives. 3 times 8 right there is 24n. 6 times n would be negative 6n. Here's where you got to be careful. Negative 6 times negative 4 would be positive 24. Now we're going to put together our like terms on this side. So I've got negative 10 and 24, um, which would be 14 plus 24n equals negative 6n plus 24. Uh, let's see, then I would need to do plus 6n, and I'm going to get 30n equals 24. I think I messed something up. Let's see here. Got something didn't go right. Start this over. All right. Double check here. Negative 10, n, oh, that's supposed to be an n right there. Now it's making sense. Okay, so that means negative 10, n, and negative 24, n. So that would be 14, n, plus 24, equals 6, n, plus 24, minus 6, n. 14 minus 6 is 8. Um, oops. Plus 24 equals 24. Now if we do minus 24, we get 8n equals 0. So that means n is just going to equal 0, that one. So that's the basic idea. Just make sure that you're rainbowing first. Just follow your steps. All right, next one is going to be a system of linear equations, and you guys have done this before, so this is when we have two equations together. Um, so, like, y equals 6x minus 11, and then we've got our second equation is negative 2x minus 3y equals negative 7. And remember, we had two different methods. We had substitution, and we had elimination. Basically, where elimination is where you just add the two together. I'm going to use substitution for this. I feel like that would be the easiest method um, because I know my value of y right there. So I'm just going to fill that value in when I get to y. So I'm going to rewrite the equation, but I'm going to fill that value in when I get to y. So negative 2x minus 3 times y. y is 6x minus 11 equals negative 7. And now I can solve because I only have x in there. So negative 2x. 3 times 6 is 18x. This would be a positive. Negative times negative makes a positive. 33 
close to negative 7. Now I've got to look for like terms here. So I can put together 2x, 18x, that would be negative 20x plus 33 equals negative 7. Now I've got to get rid of this 33. And I don't like that yellow. I'm going to change back to black. Negative 20x equals, <coughs> that would be negative 40. And then we just divide by negative 20. And those ca negatives will cancel each other. And another trick is you can knock off these zeros. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Okay, that is not my answer. I need an x value and a y value, right? My x is 2. Now I have to figure out what y is. All I have to do is plug it back into here. So y equals 6. I'm plugging it back into that equation right there at the top. 6 times x, which is 2, minus 11. 6 times 2 is 12, minus 11. 12 minus 11 would be 1. So y is 1. And you're going to write this as an ordered pair of 2, 1. That's what your answer would look like. Make sure you put it in parentheses and you've got that comma in between there. All right. Let's see if there's another one of these. Yes, I have one more example of this. So I've got negative 3x minus 10y equals negative 4. And then I've got x minus 5y equals 18. All right, this one I don't have y equals or x equals, but I can change around this equation and make it into x equals pretty easily. So if x minus 5y equals 18, all I have to do is plus 5y on both sides, and I get x equals 18 plus 5y, and that is the exact same thing as that equation up there, right? They're, they're exactly the same. So now I have a value for x, right? So I'm going to take this value of x right here, 18 plus 5y, and I'm going to plug it into this equation right there, right? So I'm going to write that equation out as negative 3 times my value of x, which is 18 plus 5y minus 10y equals negative 4. Then I got a rainbow that 3 times 18 is 24, 44. 3 times 8 is 24. 3 times 1 is 34, 5, 54. And that'll be negative. And then negative 3 times 5 would be negative 15y minus 10y equals negative 4. Okay, now I need to put my like terms together. I've got negative 15 and negative 10, so that would be negative 54 right there. Minus 15 and 10 would be 25y equals negative 4. Now I'm going to get rid of this, so plus 54. All right, so now I have negative 25y equals 50 divided by negative 25. And that's going to be y equals negative 2. All right, that is not my answer. I have to have an x value and a y value. y equals negative 2. I can just plug that in to my other one of my equations. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to go with the easiest one. Looks like the top is, uh, the bottom actually looks easier, um, especially right here. Right, where I've already rearranged it. So I'm going to say x equals 18 plus 5 times y, which is negative 2. So that would be x equals 18. 5 times 2 would be negative 10. So x would be equal to 8. Now when I write that, I have to do it as an ordered pair. x value comes first, then my y, in parentheses, just like that, because it's a point. All right, and we did that a bunch last year. Um, X and Y intercepts. Your X intercept. Okay.
that is going to be where the graph crosses the x-axis. and your y-intercept, like in y equals mx plus b, your b is your y-intercept, that's where your graph, across this, the y-axis. Right? Um, so this one is going to be your x-intercept, Right? It's going to be y equals 0. What does x equal? This one is going to be if your x equals 0, what does y equal? Right? Let's say you have a graph right there. Right, That's your x and this is your y. When your line goes right there, when y, when x equals 0, right, that's telling us where y is. So it would be x0 something. Let's say that's 2. 2. Right? Right here would be your x-intercept, so that means y equals 0. We didn't go up and down any, right? So let's say that's negative 3. That would be negative 3, 0. That make sense? To figure that out without graphing it, all you have to do is set the other to 0, right? So let's say that we have x minus 2y equals 12. To find the x-intercept, we just figure out what it is when y is 0. So we could say x minus 2 times 0 equals 12. 2 times 0 is just 0. x equals 12. Okay, so your x-intercept, your x is going to be 12. And what would your y be? Well, your y would be 0. That's where it's hitting the x, inter x graph is when y equals 0. Um, for your y-intercept, we're going to need the value when x equals 0. Right? So we would just plug x as 0 into here. So 0 minus 2y equals 12. Um, so then we would just that, disregard that divide by negative 2, and we're going to get y equals negative 6. So our y-intercept would be y equals negative 6. What would our x be? 0, and our y would be negative 6. All right, let's try another one like that. Uh, negative 3x plus 5y equals 9. Okay, so we need an x-intercept and a y-intercept. And these aren't just one number. It's a, it's a point, so it's an ordered pair. You have to have an x-value and a y-value. For x-intercept, we want to know where our graph touches the x-line. Right, so let's say we got that, and our line is going like that. Actually, I didn't mean that for that to be right in the middle. Our line's going like that, right? So we've got a point right here where it's touching that x line. That means y is 0. I mean, other way around. <laughs> it's touching the x line when it crosses the x axis. Yes, y is 0. It's not, we didn't move it up and down at all, right? And then, so on our x intercept, y is 0 right here. So we're just going to plug in 0. So we're going to say negative 3x plus 5 times 0 equals 9. And that would just be nothing. Negative 3x equals 9. Divide by negative 3. And we're going to get x equals negative 3. So if our x would be negative 3, our y would be 0. All right, to find our y-intercept, we want to find the place where our graph is touching the y-line. So that would be right here. So we didn't go back and forth at all. It's in the middle. It's at 0, so our x is going to be 0, right? 
So we would say negative 3 times 0 plus 5y equals 9. Negative 3 times 0 is 0. 5y equals 9. We just divide by 5. And we get y equals 9 over 5. So our x would be 0. Our y would be 9 over 5. Okay. So if it's a y-intercept, your x is 0. If it's an x-intercept, your y is 0. It's just the other way around. All right. Uh, this next part is on evaluate, evaluating expressions. And now you don't have, even have to watch this video if you're in class because this is basically what we did in class. All right, so when you evaluate an expression, all we do is plug in a value. So if I've got 16 minus x, when x equals 5, all I have to do is take that 5 and plug it in here. 16 minus 5 equals 11. Easy peasy. You guys shouldn't need me to tell you how to do that. All right, evaluating functions. It's the exact same thing, except in function notation. So if I've got h of n equals negative 2n squared plus 4, and I'm supposed to find h of 4. Super duper easy. I just take that 4 and I plug it in wherever I have an n. The n's in parentheses, the 4's in parentheses. That means that this n right here is going to have to be 4. So I'm going to say negative 2, oops, I meant to change colors, negative 2, instead of n, I'm going to put a 4 squared plus 4. 4 times 4 is 16, negative 2 times 16 plus 4, 16 times 2 would be 32, and that'd be negative 32 plus 4, which would equal negative 28. So there's the answer to that. That's super easy. I'll do one more. It's just function notation. We just spent all last semester doing that. So it's basically the same thing as a regular equation, just the notation is different. g of x equals 3x minus 3, find g of negative 6. All I have to do is plug my negative 6 in, so I'm going to say 3 times negative 6 minus 3. 3 times 6 is 18, that would be negative 18 minus 3, that would equal a negative 21. Super easy, so those should be easy peasy breezy. All right, composite functions. That's when we put two functions together. So if I've got h of x equals 3x plus 2 and g of x equals negative 4x minus 5, I'm supposed to find h of g of negative 5. Okay, so what this means is I'm going to take those ones on the inside right there and do those first. So I need to find g of negative 5 first. So g of negative 5, g of negative 5 is going to be the same thing as I'm going to take my g function right here and I'm going to plug negative 5 in there. So I'm going to say 4 times negative 5 minus 5. 4 times 5 is 20. That would be positive 20 minus 5. That would be 15. Now I'm going to take my value. That means g of negative 5. All of this equals 15, right? Now that means next I need to find h of 15. So I'm just going to take 15 and I'm going to plug it into my h function right here. So 3 times 15 plus 2. Wait, let me make sure that's not negative 15, 20, g of negative 5. Yeah, okay. 
So 15 times 3 would be 45 plus 2 equals 47. Yeah, I was just looking at the wrong problem. That's the correct answer right there. All right. Let's do one more of those. I know those a couple of you were pretty confused when we did those the first time, so I just want to make sure that you remember how to do it. This next one has h of x equals 3x plus 3, and g of x equals, oh, whoops, writing down the wrong problem. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, I should have g of x equals 2x, g of x equals 2x, and h of x equals 2x plus 4, and I'm supposed to find g of h of 8. Alright, so that means I'm going to find my h of 8 first. So I'm going to take 8, and I'm going to plug it into my h function, which is right there. So I'm going to say 2 times 8, this is g of 8, plus 4. 2 times 8 is 16, plus 4 equals 20. Okay, so that means every h of 8 right here is 20. So now I need to find g of 20. So I'm going to plug that into there equals 2 times 20, right? I'm getting that from right here, right? Because I'm finding g of 20. So that is going to equal 40. And that's the answer to that one. Okay, one more thing to go over, and then we will be done. Okay, operations with functions. So if I have f of x, this is just where you add, subtract, multiply, or divide different functions. 4x minus 3, and then I've got g of x equals x to the third plus 2x, and I'm supposed to find f minus g of 4. Okay, so really what that means is f of 4 minus g of 4. So I've got to find f of 4 and g of 4, and then I have to subtract. All right, so f of 4 would be 4 times 4 minus 3. 4 times 4 is 16. Minus 3 would be 13. So f of 4 is 13 right there. Okay, and then I need to find g of 4. And that would be 4 to the third plus 2 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4, I think it's 64, but let me make sure. 6 times 4 is 24. 4 times 1 is 4. Yep, 64. Plus 2 times 4 is 8. 4 is 12. That would be 72, right? 8, 4 is 12. 72, yes. Okay, so that means that's 72. So I need 13. Take away 72. So 72 minus 13, that would be 9, 59, and that would be negative 59. So negative 59, yes, that is the answer. All right, so I just found one, found the other, and then subtracted, do whatever the operation tells you to do. I got one more example. Okay, this one says h of x equals 3x plus 3, g of x equals negative 4x plus 1. Okay, and I'm supposed to find h, h plus g of 10. Okay, so that means I need h of 10 plus g of 10. I'm just going to add them both together. So my h of 10 is going to be 3x plus 3. So 3 times 10 plus 3, which would be 30, plus 3 equals 33. So this first part is 33. 
Okay, that's h of 10. Now I need g of 10. All right, so I'm taking that equation and I'm plugging 10 in where x is. So it'll be negative 4 times 10 plus 1. Negative 4 times 10 would be negative 40 plus 1, which would equal negative 39. So I need 33 plus negative 39. That's going to be negative 6. And that's the answer for that one. All right, and that is it for this review lesson. Hopefully you already remembered how to do most of this and you didn't really even need to watch this in the first place. That would be great. Um, but if not, hopefully that refreshed your memory. All right, thanks. Bye.